Imagine if the entire of humanity, with all of our greatest minds, all the wealth we've accumulated, and every single resource we possess, all got together to accomplish one mission. We would build hundreds of pyramids. Our shuttles would take off to faraway planets. We would even turn any desert we see into a great city. But we still wouldn't be able to produce the like of this Qur'an. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Say, if mankind and the jinn gathered in order to produce the like of this Qur'an, they could not produce the like of it, even if they helped one another. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Parables in the Quran. For those who watch us in Ramadan, welcome back. And before I forget, thank you very, very, very much for your emails, without which we could not have been back on air with new episodes. For those watching for the first time, let me tell you a little bit about our show. Our show has one clear aim, to cut it short, real short. We want to fall in love with the Quran, with Allah's miracle on this planet, what God has sent to humanity. We want to believe in it and feel that this is, these are His words with utmost certainty in our heart, so that we have utmost certainty in paradise and the fact that after we die, we have a paradise to go to so that we can live life with something to look forward to. So that's exactly the clear aim of it. Parable can mean two things to so refresh our memories. Parable can mean simile, example, metaphor, to liken something we don't know to something we know for us to understand it better. I can give us an example of this. When Allah wants to teach us that there are hypocrites in the life of this world, hypocrites who claim to believe in Him but actually don't believe in Him, who say they believe in Him but deep inside don't believe in Him or are in complete doubt, He wants to teach us this. So He gives us, this is a very intangible meaning. So He gives us a tangible example. So He says in the Quran, in the chapter called the Baqarah, the cow, the heifer, He says that th their example, speaking about them, is like those who had lit up a fire. Their example is like that of one person who lit up a fire. This person lit up a fire. And then this fire illuminated all that was around that person. Very simply. And then all of a sudden that person, back to the example he was talking about, that person decided to disbelieve in Allah. Back to the spiritual, intangible meaning. Allah took their light away and left them in darknesses within which they can't see. Summun, bukmun, umyun. Allah describes their state now, giving us to explain this metaphor, this method, this parable. They are sum, which means they can't hear. Bukmun, which means they can't speak. Umyun, which means they can't see. Fahum layarji'un, which means they can't go back. Go back where? Go back to the belief that they have just disbelieved in. It's very tough. And this is how Allah gives us this very complex meaning in a simple, a very metaphysical meaning, in a very simple physical uh, sense. This is what parable means. But parable has another meaning. Parable can mean a story that has a lesson in it that needs to be applied, or a story with a moral. This is what parable can mean. And these are what these new episodes are going to be about. They're going to be about these sort of parables. The first one we've chosen is the parable from Surah Yusuf, the chapter of Yusuf, Joseph as it's known in English. Yusuf, and we've chosen it because of a few reasons. One of them is that this is the only story in the Qur'an narrated from its very beginning to its very end. Another reason we've chosen it is that Yusuf himself, may peace be upon him, went through so many things that many of us go through in our lives. In fact, many of us go only through some of the things he's gone through. He's gone through so much. He was very rich, very poor, uh, went through all sort of tribulation and temptation from women trying to seduce him. And w I don't want to burn it, as they say, burn it. Yeah, if any Egyptians are watching, they know what I'm talking about. Burn it means, <laughs> burn the movie, which only means in, in Arabic to, uh, to tell you more about the story before you actually watch it. So I want to start up, and before I actually start, and we go into uh, this parable of Yusuf alayhi uh, salam. How's the Qur'an? How's the Qur'an with everyone? I just, you know, give us, uh, improvise. Give me just any answer that comes to mind. How is the Qur'an? What's your relationship with the Qur'an? Well, uh, it's uh, actually, for my case, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was a long time of no Qur'an at all. And then all of a sudden it has become like with Qur'an all the time. And uh, we were just reading and uh, you're just learning more. I mean, I'm learning more, a lot more. And uh, the things that I just don't understand, I continue reading and, uh, and just... Um, Trying to learn from the Quran because uh, for me right now it's this is the best for me it's the number one learning text and uh, a part of history too you know if you, if you really think of it in that way the number one learning text learning text okay <laughs> again the Quran on the girl side I mean uh, how frequently do we read it or how do we what do we feel when we think or hear the word Quran well, alhamdulillah nowadays I'm kind of studying and I don't have time but I really try and especially when I, I started reading the Quran like when growing up in America, they tried to get us to 
to do things and pray and stuff, they used to focus on the wrath of Allah and His anger and, and don't make Allah angry and everything's haram. And I was like, dang, you're everything's haram. Haram isn't prohibited? Yes, yeah. prohibited. So, um, but when I started reading, like every other ayah or every other um, verse was like, well, in the Kenna Rabbuka Ghafurun Rahim, like God is, you know, gracious, He's merciful. He's and forgiving. It was, exactly. And so it became so inspiring that the more I read, the more encouraged I became. Okay. That's and that's the thing about it. You said you would read it in English at first? Yeah. And, and the... And, and, and sometimes, and like, I would improvise, have a Quran, like a tape next to me and read the... That's, you know, I, I'm asking this because a lot of people who may be watching at home, I've said this before, so bear with me if you've heard this before, but to encourage myself and everyone watching, I couldn't read a word of Arabic before. And now here I am trying to pretend that I speak Arabic and then say the Arabic verse and then turn it into English again. That's just, you know, it mm -hmm. took a year and a half or, or, or less. SubhanAllah, because I really wanted it. I sat there and I said, I can't live without hearing Allah's words firsthand. I want to know exactly, I mean, are you, are you serious? Inside the Quran, what Allah has to say here and now, today? I got to hear it. So it, it happens. It can ha you can learn Arabic. And inshallah, we'll, you know, throughout the show, talk about perhaps ways of how we can be doing this. And uh, I want to get down to business. So Surat Yusuf, uh, we want to start with it. So it starts, of course, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif, Lam, Ra. These three letters. And many chapters in the Quran start off with three letters. Alif, Lam, Mim. It's like as if it would be saying A-L-M. Or Alif, Lam, Ra would be saying, as if it would be saying A-L-R. You know, or Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad. A L M S, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's the point behind it. What are these letters? Many people have said many things, and my heart rests with the interpretation I'm about to give us that I've read from the scholars. What they're saying is the following, okay? They're like, now, the Quran is miraculous. This is the claim that, you know, that we make as Muslims who believe in it, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, makes as the person whom it was revealed to. And uh, people who don't believe in the Quran claim the opposite. They claim it was written by man. Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is what they say. So what, what, what the scholars have said about A-L-R, or Alif Lam Ra, as we've put it, is that the Arabs were so amazed at the beauty and the eloquence of the Qur'an and how articulate it was and how it spoke of the future and how it spoke about the future in past tense and how it narrated stories that the Arabs never knew about and later on found, you know, told in, in the books of others and how it avoided certain mistakes that the books of others had, had made. So if he was really copying from them, how later on when history proved otherwise, did he have the truth with him unless Allah was sending down to him and all that stuff. And it's so miraculous that people feel that it's alive. These words, you don't get bored of reading the Qur'an, of hearing the Qur'an. So back to Alif Lam Ra, some people say, some scholars say that Allah is saying, O oh Arabs, and of course all of us also when we understand <coughs> Arabic, here are your letters. These words that you will not be able to say words like, are made from the very same letters, samples of which are A, L, R, Alif, Lam, Ra, that you use. The very same words, your very same language. Alif, Lam, Ra. And the example someone gave about that was like if someone were to build, this is just a very contemporary thing, but if you ever see that hotel, Jumeirah Beach Hotel, you've seen it? What does it look like? See, now if you're making, I'm just See the leaves, this, well, it's almost like saying miraculous. It's built in the ocean, I believe. Oh, it's very beautiful. In Dubai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And the thing about it is, because we're going to be wrapping this up soon, is that this hotel is built, and imagine someone coming up to you, the, the engineer who built it, who is certain that nobody else will be able to build a hotel like it. Imagine he comes up to you and says, make something like this. Now this is, we're only giving an example, of course, because we're going to be wrapping it up. Here are the three bricks that I've made this hotel from. They are. These are the same bricks. You can't do it. You can't build one like it. So again, to wrap it up, these are the three letters. Here are letters from your language, O Arabs. Speak like Quran. It won't happen. So this is the, the miracle of the Qur'an, and this is the end of our first uh, part of uh, the show, and we'll see you, inshallah, after the break. <laughs>